Remember, do not underestimate the power of PlayStation. How do you like my planet, Lombax? It's been dormant for years, thanks to your kind. I love the ruins. Feng Shui meets drab and dismal. I dig it. Science, you half-wit! This is Mikonos Fan, and welcome back to Learning to Love PlayStation. Today we look at Ratchet & Clank Future, Tools of Destruction, developed by Insomniac Games and released for the PlayStation 3 in late 2007. Tools of Destruction represents a pretty big jump for the series. It was the first mainline Ratchet title in a few years, and more notably was the first Ratchet & Clank game to make the jump to high definition. I had some pretty high expectations for this one, and I would say for the most part my expectations were met. The story gets rolling pretty quickly. Ratchet and Clank are working on some vehicle when Quark interrupts them to tell them about a huge armed invasion led by Percival Tachyon. Tachyon just happens to have it out for Ratchet, as his species banished Tachyon's kind, the Kragmites, to another dimension or, you know, something. Ultimately, our duo escape and make acquaintance with a smuggler named uh, Smuggler, who helps them to get away. The plot feels much more involved this time around, but not in a pervasive way. Throughout the journey, you meet an interesting cast of characters, notably some villainous pirates, some girl named Tawin, and her robotic companions Kronk and Zephyr. Uh, aside from the very beginning, the story is paced pretty well, and there weren't really any characters I disliked, though I wasn't crazy about Tachyon overall. He just kind of felt like a Jimmy Neutron villain, I don't know. Across the board, the game seems to reel in the goofiness from up your arsenal and brings things back to a more grounded, kinda serious tone, and it works pretty well. My main points of contention with the story just pretty much boil down to two things which I might actually just be alone on. For one, Clank keeps being visited by strange, mystical, floating things called the Zoni. And outside of the ending, only Clank can see and communicate with them, and on occasion they give him premonitions of the future, and uh, yeah, so spo spoiler alert, right at the end, they claim Clank as the chosen one, and whisk him away as the game's cliffhanger. I've been told by people any weird feelings I have about this weird plot device will make sense in a couple games, but for the here and now in the meantime, I wasn't crazy about it. My other hang-up was that Ratchet randomly begins doubting Clank with regards to these Zoni. Now, obviously, it's a bit frustrating when your friend keeps claiming to see things that you don't, but Clank is a robot. He's not going to go around spreading lies to Ratchet after three or four whole galaxy-saving events together. It just felt sort of contrived that Ratchet would just randomly be an ass about this to him. And it kind of actually felt like a retread of the first game, where Ratchet was just randomly an ass to Clank. There are reasonable things these characters can disagree on and have interesting relationship dynamics over, but this one didn't cut it for me. Anyway, I'm not going to harp on the story too long. It's presented more seriously, so I feel it's open to a bit more of a critical eye, but without knowing the twists and turns presented later in other games, I didn't want to keep going on. So let's talk cosmetics for a little bit. Naturally, being on more powerful hardware, at the time of its release it was the best looking game in its series. The environments are interesting to look at, and some of the animations on the enemies are really nice. This game was consistently delightful to look at. I just wish the game wasn't so dark at times. Oof. The gameplay feels how you would expect a Ratchet & Clank title to feel, which is a good thing. I felt that Ratchet controlled a bit more stiffly than last time, but... Overall, I felt comfortable once I got used to squatting being an R2 now instead of R1. I'd say um, side by side, I actually kind of preferred the way Ratchet felt in Up Your Arsenal, but it's still pretty good here. In terms of game structure, I'm very relieved that it feels more like a sequel to Going Commando than Up Your Arsenal. The game is still mostly combat, but levels are a bit shorter and there are more platforming objectives in the main levels which makes things feel more balanced even if that's not always the actual case. Weapons return with a 5 level structure and tons of upgrades which can be applied in exchange for a secondary currency at weapons vendors. Overall the lineup's fine, but I did have issue with one, which I'm using as an example so I can segue outside of the weapons with it as well. There is a tornado gun, which sounds pretty awesome. Firing it makes a tornado, as you'd expect. What I didn't expect 
was that controlling the tornado's path of destruction makes use of the DualShock 3's 6-axis motion control scheme. AKA that thing where you tilt the controller around with your hands and go, I don't know. I could never make effective use of this and pretty much had to drop that weapon entirely. 6-axis controls permeate into a few gameplay styles as well, though thankfully the rest seem to work pretty well. Once in a while, you use the motion controls to navigate a glider function that the Zoni grant to Clank. In another, you disguise yourself as a pirate in an alternate take on the Tyranoid style from Ratchet 3 while dancing. And other times, you'll guide a laser to destroy walls. It's all rather forgiving, and while I feel it kind of took me out of the experience from time to time, it was never unwieldy, aside from the tornado gun, of course. The last notable usage of 6-axis is in a, the door puzzle minigames, which this time have you tilt a board to maneuver a ball around to help you connect dots. I wound up liking this, and it mostly gave me a fair challenge. However, the board is kind of at a weird perspective, and when I moved my controller forward to tilt the ball up, I never really felt like I was actually tilting forward in-game, despite the ball performing as it should. I don't know, that was just probably me. Also of mention is that Space Flight's return, and are now on rails making them more mindless but ultimately more enjoyable in my opinion. Not too much to say about these, you dodge shots, fire shots, make it to the end. They're a nice little break here and there. Solo Clank gameplay returns yet again with some welcome shakeups as well. He still runs around with basic punches and platforming but is assisted by the Zoni to replace the little robots from the past games. While this mostly tends to play out almost exactly the same, with you going to certain points and commanding the Zoni to perform contextual basic tasks, you gain the ability to slow down time and generate a floating platform under yourself, which makes things a little more interesting. I don't want to say these sections feel like an afterthought in the series, but by this point they certainly pale in comparison to Ratchet's core gameplay. Ultimately, while I feel like I need to gush more about the game, because I really liked it, it's hard to when things have been so similar with these games, and that's not meant negatively. The game is paced well, it's humorous, it feels good to play, easy on the eyes, and I definitely recommend it and see what the hype was for. But for now, it's time to move on to the next title in the future series. With Tachyon banished and Clank abducted, when next we meet, we'll set out on a quest for booty. This has been Mikonos Fan, as always, thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you next time on Learning to Love PlayStation.